Thank you. It is my pleasure to welcome Kristen Kopler, our Associate Vice President of Advancement, to the podium. Kristen. Thank you, Tom, and thank you, PSU Green Notes and the Jazz Ensemble. I have to say, as wonderful as you were, and they were wonderful, our students are the best, next year, I think we need to have Janine Coles sing. <laughs> <laughs> So just very quickly, my name is Kristen Coppola. I'm the Associate Vice President for University Development. It is absolutely my pleasure to welcome you all here tonight. I have to say, when you work at a university, you go to a lot of events, a lot of events. I think the President would agree with me on this. And I think he would also agree with me when I say that this is by far our favorite event because it's about the students and it's about the donors who make their dreams possible. So a big round of applause to you all for being here tonight. I've been coming to this event now for five years and as I spoke with many of you earlier, we all commented on the same thing. This event has gotten so big, it really has. And it's, it's wonderful to see. And the other thing that struck me as I moved around the room was how many of the students were meeting their scholarship donors for the first time and the impact that that had on them, that they knew someone else believed in them and believed that they could get through and was willing to support their effort. The other thing that I noticed was that many of the donors meeting their students, not all students had a donor here. And there's one young man back here in the corner who came up to me and said, is my donor here? I really want to thank him. So if you, are, if you are a donor without a student, looking for a student, <laughs> Neil, would you stand up and say hello? <laughs> well, kidding aside, we all know that the percentage of Oregonians with college degrees is still too low. And we also know that college tuition costs, as hard as we fight to keep them affordable here at Portland State, they're still going up. And so what tonight is about is not about us getting up to make the case to you that scholarships make a difference. You already know that. Tonight is to celebrate you for the difference that you make in their lives. And that's why it's our favorite event. So we've had a program change, as you'll see, but it's worth it. Uh, we're going to scramble the eggs here a little bit, and I'm going to introduce you to a donor and their student uh, who have really could teach a master class on scholarship administration and awarding here at Portland State. Irving Levin and Stephanie Fowler, our 2012 Simon Benson honorees, started the Renaissance Foundation Undergraduate Scholarship, gosh, how many years ago? Twelve, uh, eight? And since that time, they have helped 67 students through Portland State University. The other thing worth mentioning, as they pointed out to me this afternoon, is the completion rate for their students is unbelievably high. It's about 97 percent. Yeah. <laughs> or maybe I just made that up, but it's in the high 90s. And I'm pretty sure that's just because none of them want to have to tell Irving and Stephanie or Diana that they're not getting it done. But whatever works. I think that's great. So last year, they established a scholarship in the Graduate School of Education for first-generation students who have decided to go on and become teachers. So they really are making a difference in the lives of so many. I'm so happy to introduce them to you now and one of their students. Please join me in welcoming Irving Levin. I don't know if Stephanie's coming up. I hope she will. Come on up. And their student, Larita Riggs. You said most of the stuff I was going to say. Uh, we've been coming to this event for eight years, and I think the first time it was in a large conference room. It's, uh, it just seems like everything else in, in general about uh, Portland State, it just gets bigger and better every year. And this is really wonderful. It really is a festival. 
when Stephanie and I uh, were thinking um, about how to invest in education, uh, because we've, we've always believed that education is a real engine for social mobility, we wanted to do, take a particular approach, uh, helping people without the financial means to go to try and make the difference. And to Portland State, State's great credit, they helped us craft a, a program so that we could achieve that goal. And over the last eight years, we've uh, supported and gotten to know some absolutely remarkable people. And some of those remarkable people are here. Can everybody uh, with our scholarship please stand? Uh, some of these folks have actually graduated, but I think it's, uh, it's a wonderful thing that they still feel a bond with the rest of uh, our scholarship community. Uh, one remarkable uh, example of the kind of talented people we have is going to speak next. Her name is Loretta Riggs. She's a senior. She told me, and I didn't know this until just today, that her decision uh, came down to Princeton and Portland State. Uh, Princeton offered her a full ride. I, we didn't offer her a full ride at Portland State, but it's to our uh, and our community's immense uh, good fortune that Loretta decided to come to Portland State. Loretta? Good evening, family and friends. Um, so growing up, my family hauled water and wood because we didn't have running water or electricity. Productivity for our family meant always being physically active, um, whether it was chopping wood or tending to our horses or cleaning around our house. Um, and throughout high school, I did most of my homework in a bathroom with, um, with a flashlight when my family went to sleep, mostly because I didn't want them to worry. And re reflecting upon those experiences, I remember above all having the choice to go to college, even though none of my family had that choice before. I struggled most for leaving what little we had of our stories, our songs, our ceremonies, and our traditional ways of our people. As the first in my entire family to leave the reservation, I asked my grandfather what he thought of this. In our Dine language, he said, I was carrying a lidded torch of fire through this canyon, through an unknown place for our people to follow. I left the reservation with no real, real awareness of the inequalities of our world, the appalling disparities of health, wealth, and opportunities that millions of people do not have. But being among so much energy and intelligence has been truly inspiring. College has been exciting, intimidating, and sometimes discouraging, but it has always been challenging in a good way. It's been an amazing privilege, and though I'm still learning, I have truly been transformed by my experiences at Portland State University. At the end of the day, many student inventors, activists, and future leaders come from around the world to PSU to defend and support their traditional ways of life. And resources matter in this process. Opportunity is what it takes to build strong, successful young people, not genetics, pedigree, or luck. As I finish my child and family studies degree this term, I know I will forever be grateful for Stephanie and Irving for carrying this torch with me through this canyon and providing all Loving Fowler scholarships with resources and opportunities to help our world. If there's one thing you all can do, know that you're not just investing in us, but you're also investing in the missing voices of our people. 
for the betterment of our communities and our nations. Thank you. Thank you, Larita, Irving, Stephanie, Diana. We were talking earlier today about the kinds of students you want to reach with your scholarships, and you said there's something about the content of the character, and we know it when we see it, and I think we just saw it. And I think we have a lot of students that have remarkable stories like that. So thank you. It's now my pleasure to introduce our president, Vim Vivel who has a bold strategy for an urban-serving research university and a strong commitment to increasing scholarships for students. Please join me in welcoming President Vivel. Okay, it's up to you. Well, thank you, Kristen, for uh, you know, changing the sequence of the program so I could follow Larita. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'll just go home now. <laughs> That was wonderful and inspiring. Uh, thank you so much for being here and for sharing your story just in such a brief way, but so powerfully with all of us. And of course, thanks to you, Stephanie and Irving, but thanks to all of you, because I know that uh, we have many stories like that in this room. The details will vary for everybody but there are many stories like that, and I think that's the very nature of Portland State, that it makes opportunity possible. It makes excellence possible. It's through the work of you. And even though we are so proud of having so many of you here tonight, and so many more than before, we also still know that there aren't far, there aren't enough of us yet. There aren't enough of us yet. We still have so much more to do to reach all the Loritas and all her peers uh, throughout this state, never mind this country, throughout this state, and to give them the opportunity that if they get it, they can take advantage of in such a glorious way. So we have this event to, to thank you. Uh, but as, as Kristen said, you don't need to be convinced of the importance. But what you do need, what all of us need, is to continue to convince others, to continue to reach out so we can build this community ever larger and more powerful so that this room will definitely be too small and so that we really will need that arena at the Stott Center <laughs> to house all of us. That's just a little plug on the side. <laughs> it's not just about scholarships, right? Because as you know, as you know, and this, this is a case, again, that many of you know, but that we need you to help make to others. We know that these are very challenging days for higher education in the United States. People are rightly concerned about rising tuition because that has led to great student debt. And along with that, in the recession and the very slow recovery that we have, people then feel the jobs aren't necessarily there uh, at the other side. And just to sort of add to that, the rise in online learning with its great promise on the one hand, because I truly do think that it holds tremendous promise for providing ever greater access to educational opportunities for people throughout the country, for people perhaps uh, in, in parts of the state where they have not historically gone away to school, where the idea of going away to school is scary or difficult or economically not practical, being able to provide that access. But it also has lots of quality issues with it, lots of challenges with it. So because of all that, we have a great challenge for us. Even though at Portland State, as you've heard me say before, we are not spending any more money per student now than we did 15 years ago after you just adjust for inflation. We're not spending any more. Our professors haven't gotten lazy. We haven't built a lot of lazy rivers or climbing walls. Uh, and even though we try to keep the buildings up to date and the campus looking nice, 
It is not like we've been going on a spending binge. We spent the same per student as we did 15 or 20 years ago, but who pays has totally changed. As you know, 15 years ago, the state paid 80%. Now the state pays 20% of that cost. And the students went from going, from paying 20% to paying 70%. And that missing 10%, for those of you who are mathematicians or economists, we make up on volume. <laughs> we get it from philanthropy. We get it from a lot of other sources. We get it from some out-of-state students. But it poses a tremendous challenge. And we all know it matters. Because we know that a college degree evermore is the key to future success. The college graduates earn more money, but more importantly, it's only, I think, through a college education on the whole that people can really, truly, fully develop their own potential as a human being and take their place as a citizen of a democratic society. And, you know, and this is something that Thomas Jefferson already said over 200 years ago, and it's a lesson that we continue to forget when people start questioning, well, does everybody really need a college education? Well, they may not quite need a college education just to have the job. But people need a chance to explore knowledge, to explore the history of their own people and of this country, and to be able to learn to think and criticize and analyze if they're going to be intelligent citizens. And God knows we need more intelligent citizens. <laughs> you know that Oregon has formalized this goal by saying that everybody in the state should have a high school degree, and then 40% should go on to get some post-secondary education and 40% should get a bachelor's degree or beyond. Um, right now, we're not anywhere close to that. We're only at about 30% with a college degree and frankly, only 20% with some kind of post-secondary education other than a college degree. And we frankly don't even graduate close to 100% of our people from high school. We're only at 70% or so. We have a long way to go, and PSU will play a key role in this because the population that we need to draw in are not the people who always used to go to college. They're not the children of the middle and upper middle class, the people who always knew how to find opportunity. They're the people who haven't been able to find opportunity, who are homebound in some way or family-bound or community-bound, who have to work while they're going to school, have a family themselves to take care of. And it's only through the help that you provide that we can get people here. Because right now, our students have these challenges. You know, we have 30,000 students, but half of them are the first in their families to go to college. They all have high financial needs. 57% receive some aid, but almost all of those still have unmet need after they get the federal Pell Grant and the state opportunity grant and whatever institutional aid and scholarship help we can give. As a result, they're working hard, and frankly, they're working too hard. Half of our freshmen work 20 hours or more per week in a job. 30% of the seniors work more. That has an effect on how much time and energy you can devote to your studies. We need to reduce it if we're gonna have students succeed. And as you know, our students graduate with debt. About two-thirds of our students graduate with debt, the undergraduates have about $26,000. The graduates have about $36,000. We now know that these are numbers that are off-putting to many people. You may well say, if you graduate and you find a good job, then $26,000 is not such a crazy number, and it is not. But if you're not sure whether you will ever graduate, because nobody in your family has ever gone to college, has never seen that that road actually worked and paid off, then that is a darn scary number. So we gotta keep working on that, and it is your help that is so critical. We award $3 million in donor-funded scholarships. And it's so hard to say this the right way, because we are so thankful to all of you, but at the same time, it is still such a small number, given the level of need that we have. And it's not because of you that it's a small number, it's thanks to you that it's a big number. It's because of everybody else that we haven't been able to reach yet, that the number isn't big enough yet. We need to find far more. But today, we celebrate. As you know, in the campaign, in our comprehensive campaign that we're going to start, scholarships are going to be a central part. But today, we celebrate where we already are and how we've gotten there. You've already heard 
one set of stories. I'm now going to introduce two more of our wonderful donors and one of their students. So let me turn to Dr. Karen Brown Wilson and Dr. Michael Deshane, who are pioneers in the field of gerontology, who both earned their PhD from Portland State who've been engaged in community-based care since the 70s and op operated the first assisted living project in Oregon. They've been generous donors. They established the Aging Matters Initiative, which connects our university capstone students to elders in Nicaragua. What better way than make that local global connection? Addressing housing and other needs of elders. And, over 250 students and faculty from PSU have participated in, in that program. The DeShane Wilson Scholarship Program began in 2007, and it's a collaboration between Clackamas Community College and PSU, where people first complete two years at Clackamas and then transfer to PSU. And so far, we've graduated nine of those students, and we keep working at it. Please help me welcome Karen Brown Wilson and Michael DeShane. First, I'm not following that act. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're so happy to be here and we're so happy to see so many young faces because we know that many of those young faces are, in fact, recipients of financial aid and scholarships. Um, a few days ago, the foundation that I work with on behalf of Indigent Elders hosted a luncheon. At this luncheon, we gave out our Ageless Award. Now, you've already heard a little indication that we sort of have a focus on older adults. Um, but you'll hear in a minute why that's not the only thing and the only group that we're concerned about. The award that we gave out was given to individuals of whom one is here tonight, Janine Coles. who exemplify having lived a purposeful life. We know from years of research, you heard us called doctors, and Michael will tell you that of course, we're the real doctors, the PhD kind, not the barbers and surgeon kinds. We know from years of research, the importance of the pursuit of meaning on, ha on the happiness and well-being of individuals. One way that Michael and I have chosen to pursue meaning in our lives is our support of scholarships. Selfishly, we support scholarships because we expect a good return on our investment. And you're gonna see some return, really good return in a few minutes from Cassie, who's going to speak to you. Um, because we believe that scholarships, as you've already heard, do create betterment in the community in which we and our families live. But we also derive much pleasure from returning the investment others made in us so many years ago. Many of you know that I could not have gone to college without scholarship assistance. Most of us here today have benefited from the kindness of someone at some point in our lives. To my way of thinking, scholarships are one way to repay that kindness and that investment that others have made in us. Few things have the power to change a life so much, so absolutely. Further, scholarships are a pretty safe investment. They yield a pretty steady return over a lifetime. So when taken with the sense of doing something personally meaningful, the leverage that scholarships produce seems like a low risk, high reward bet. For those of you that have already discovered this fact, thank you. For those of you who yet to have experienced it, please join us. Increase the number of scholarships for students at Portland State University.
Thank you, dear. <laughs> that investment works well in marriages, too, is so I hear. <laughs> I don't know whether to talk into this. That's the light, right? <laughs> I feel that everything, like Levin, I feel everything's been said. What the heck am I doing here? Uh, but I want to, every year, we are at scholarship kind of, we, we fund a little bit every year. Uh, to Clackamas and to PSU on, on the scholarship. And, and every year, Trish Hamilton calls me up and says, well, Trish Hamilton with the School of Urban Affairs and kind of like the mother I should have had or something like that. <laughs> but she's, she's half my age, so that wouldn't work. Would it? Uh, she calls me up and says, well, are we going to get checked before the end of... And I, and I always tell her, well, I don't know... Uh, I got my eye on this Lamborghini, uh, and she always talks me out of it. Then I think, why not a Lamborghini? Why shouldn't I get that little yellow one that's coon talk or whatever they are? Um, well, there's a number of reasons probably why I shouldn't do that. First, Lamborghinis lose value over time. Once you buy it, drive it off the lot, it's not worth the $300,000. It's only worth $200,000. <laughs> Scholarships grow in value over time. You invest in a scholarship, it only brings more and more to society and to the recipient. We, as Karen said, we invest in scholarships. We don't give scholarships. We invest in them. Second, Lamborghini may well endanger my life. <laughs> <laughs> Not to mention other drivers, pedestrians, their pets, and who knows, who knows what else may be there. But scholarships will almost certainly improve the lives of the recipients and their families. Third, I'm almost done with this allegorical stuff. So. Third, Lamborghinis require expensive maintenance. Thousand dollar oil changes come to mind and things like that. Uh, scholarships pay us and pay society back with interest. And finally, Lamborghinis eventually end up on a scrap heap. Scholarships recipients may end up as Nobel Prize winners, as Pulitzer Prize winners, or my favorite, as being inducted into the Gerontologist Hall of Fame. <laughs> I don't think there is one, but Karen will get in there, I'm sure. <laughs> uh, Karen and I actually feel privileged. We feel very privileged to be able to give, to have the, uh, the amount of money to give to scholarships. Uh, and we're privileged to see people like Cassandra, like Cassie Hodges, take what is really a, really a small percentage of the money it costs to go to college. A three or $4,000 scholarship is a teeny, teeny bit. Uh, of what it does. And neither Karen and I are honorees in this thing. Rather, we're here to honor the recipients who do so much with that little teeny bit of money they get. Uh, they've got to, like, stay alert through classes, go through sticker shock at the library. Or not the library, at the bookstore. The library's free, by the way. <laughs> well, it's not free. You've got to pay your... Uh, but we do that, so... Uh, Studying instead of paying time with spending time with families, lack of steady income, losing sleep while studying for exams, realizing you left your umbrella on the bus <laughs> this morning. And that's a little real time thing. When you're at Portland State and you leave your umbrella on the bus, it's easy to get another one. You just go to Lost and Found. Tell them you lost your umbrella. <laughs> and they always say, well, what does it look like? I said, well, it's black, you know, it's got, a, it's got a handle. And they bring out this whole box of umbrellas. And you go through it till you find the nicest one. And then you can leave it on the bus the next time. So, so that's just part of the price that we're seeing paying. We're just so damned happy to be able to do this. Now I'm kind of looking forward to going to the Ford dealer and seeing if that PSU green Taurus is still on, <laughs> on sale. Thank you. Cassandra, we would like you to...
Good evening. <laughs> I just want to start out by saying thank you for allowing me this opportunity and for all the encouragement I was given to come here and share a little bit about myself and my story with all of you here tonight. I'm a health science major here at PSU, working towards completing my prerequisites for occupational therapy. I graduated in Canby High School from 2009 with my honors diploma, and I received a small scholarship for Clackamas Community College during my senior year of high school. That really brought on the idea that college was a possibility for me. My parents weren't able to help me financially with school, and I didn't really want to go into debt straight after high school. That first scholarship gave me a small glimpse of the possibilities and endeavors that lay ahead of me. I started at Clackamas in the fall of 2009, and I worked diligently to keep my grades up and to keep a competitive GPA. I was awarded the DeShane Wilson Scholarship during my second year at CCC. At that time, I didn't realize the impact that the scholarship would have on my education and on my life as well. The DeShane Wilson Scholarship greatly broadened my opportunities for receiving a higher education. I'd planned on taking a break from my studies after getting my associate's degree to avoid the financial difficulties of dealing with student loans, but Karen and Michael provided me with a different pathway. I realized that higher education really was a possibility for me, all thanks to their generosity. I'm now the first person in my family to have attended a four-year college, and in two months from now, I will be the first person to have graduated from college and received my bachelor's degree. <laughs> Attending Portland State has completely changed me as a person. I've been challenged with, enlightened by, and exposed to so many new perspectives and subjects and I will forever be grateful for everything I've encountered here in the last two years. This university has opened my eyes to many new ideas and perspectives in all areas of my life. I'm a member of Tau Sigma National Honor Society, and I've managed to make the Dean's List twice. I'm extremely, extremely blessed and proud to say that when I graduate in June, I will also be completely debt-free. I hope to be given the opportunity in the near future to attend Pacific University, where I will study for my doctorate in, op in occupational therapy. I hope that one day I will be able to give back and change the lives of motivated students, just as Karen and Michael have so graciously done for me. And in closing, I would just like to take one more opportunity to thank you, Karen and Michael, for all you have done for me, and to thank all of the other scholarship donors as well for everything you have done as well. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Cassie. Uh, thank you very much, Michael, for introducing a note of levity into these uh, <laughs> proceedings. You know, we didn't need any more, you know, emotional appeals here, so that was, that was good. And, and uh, a Ford Taurus really is a pretty good car, although I, I, recommend, <laughs> I recommend the Camry if you're going to go that anyway. Uh, and, and Karen, of course, thank you, thank you so much. I, I want to... Uh, you know, call out two people that I, I wanted to recognize at the beginning, but I, I, I couldn't because I had to talk about Larita's uh, talk. But I'm particularly proud to have uh, with us today uh, former Governor Barbara Roberts, uh, who has been a great supporter of Portland State. Um, and, and, and but, but you got to admit, the current guy is doing a pretty decent job also. He's, uh, he's doing, doing, doing all right for us. And, and also, I'm, I'm very proud to have uh, with us today, uh, as a donor of scholarship, uh, Judith Romaley, uh, my predecessor, twice removed, our president of Portland State. Judith, please uh, stand up. You know, there, there, there is nothing that, that says commitment than, than a president who, after having gone and, and done wonderful things elsewhere, comes back to, to Portland and, and reinvests in, in the institution and the community. So it's great to have you. So I want to just wrap up by, uh, again, thanking all of you for joining us to celebrate, because it really is a celebration by, by coming together, uh, listening to a few of each other's stories, spending time the students, with the donors, the donors, uh, with your students. Uh, we hope that it's always inspiring and always makes you feel, like Karen and Michael said, that you are making an investment that is paying off in so many ways, both for you personally and the satisfaction, the pride, and knowing that it will pay off for our community, our city, our state, and our country. 
So thank you all very much for joining us. Good night.